Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video. So glad you joined us today. Hit the like button and hit subscribe as we continue to bring you all the educational content we possibly can. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, this is our educational segment uh, on ETFs. A brand new topic for us. We're going to talk about uh, everything you need to know when it comes to trading ETFs, how you can use them in your trading, even if you're not actually ex trading the ETF itself. Uh, first off, what is an ETF? Exchange traded fund, right? So uh, similar to a mutual fund or any kind of fund that holds uh, a bunch of different stocks in it, but these are traded just like stocks. So let's jump right into it here. We'll bring in Neil and Sean and get uh, going on ETFs, guys. Uh, something we look at on a daily basis, whether it's the SPY or the Qs or USO, if you're looking at the oil or energy markets, uh, very, very vast topic. Let's get going on ETFs. Yeah, I'm going to dive in. The first thing I'm going to say is, uh, regardless of your preference or how you're going to use them, there are two primary things you're going to talk about here today. Uh, you can trade an ETF because, they, like you said, Brennan, they trade uh, like a stock, but they're also valuable indicators. And I think that's a second point that a lot of people uh, don't always use as often as I think is available to them. So, you know, for me, you can jump between one or the other. Uh, I'm going to quickly uh, throw up my uh, quote board here because, you know, I actually have a list of ETFs here. Uh, and it'll show you some of the more popular ones uh, that you mentioned there. You have GDX for gold miners. Uh, you have jets if you're looking at the airline industry, silver. There's almost an ETF for everything. I only have a few here. Now, one of the main reasons why I think it's valuable, even if you're not going to trade them, and I think this is almost a must, is because they're an easy way to see overall sentiment within a sector. Uh, it's easy to have on your quote board. You can even call it up on a level two in a chart uh, to be able to have a resource. Like if you're trading, uh, you know, if you're trading spot gold, if you're trading uh, over in some of the airlines, maybe you do want to have jets up on the slide just to see uh, what is happening. Maybe there's relative strength or weakness in an individual name. Maybe Southwest is strong relative uh, to the rest of the overall airline market. Well, the only way you're going to know that is if you have an ETF up and can see a, a track where that movement is going to be. So even if you are not trading it, I suggest if you heavily trade in any given sector or there's a group of stocks like for us, the travel industry lately, you might want to have those ETFs up there just so you have an idea what the overall sector is doing and uh, you're not ignoring uh, relative strength or weakness, which is a big thing uh, for a trader, at least as, as an advantage. Yeah, I mean, that's a great explanation there of uh, what we're looking for with ETFs. I put together something here um, that I think is pretty important, and it's the pros and cons. I mean, a lot of traders, they're looking to say, you know, why do I want to trade an ETF? I can just trade the futures. I can just trade single stocks. I can do whatever. But depending on your portfolio and what you're looking at, I think uh, part of the thing is here, what we've experienced now in 2019 and 2020, a lot of brokers went to free uh, trading on ETFs. So I think that that's one of the most important pros here, and we have listed on here, low cost, free trading. You do also, do, Neil talked about USO there for United States Oil. There is also portfolio diversification available. Look at that. XRT, retail, XLE, energy, gold miners, even the VIX is an ETF. So you do have some representation there as well. Um, easy way to get your hands into a basket of stocks and only having to make that one transaction. We do have cons. What are some of the cons? Well, someone's got to manage the ETF, right? So you do have some management fee uh, issues that you have to go through there. A lot of the time, 1% to 2% is what you'd be looking at on a management fee. Make sure you check those out. Some of them have a lack of liquidity. We can show that uh, on our level two. So you may not get the best fill there. You may not get the best price. Uh, and then what we have coming up, uh, you know, the big one here uh, in June, you do have a rebalance. So every quarter, there's the S&P 500, the Russell, the MSC, they all do a rebalancing. So that can also, Brendan, affect ETF pricing. So now, guys, that we know exactly what an ETF is, let's talk a little bit about how we can use them as trading ideas. So obviously, you can trade a group, as we just discussed, as there is an ETF for basically every single sector in the entire world, or you can trade them individually as actual marketplace. So uh, if you don't like the risk of the futures market, if it's a little bit too pricey for you, you 
you want to get exposure to the overall market instead of just individual stocks, we can do that by trading an ETF. The Qs, the SPY, there's lots of them. The Diamonds, DIA follows the Dow Jones. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about how we can use these as individual trading opportunities, guys, uh, as far as market plays are concerned. And also, after that, I want to jump into how we can use them maybe as a hedge for an individual stock play. Okay. Yeah, I, I love that second point, and uh, we'll definitely get to that in a quick second. You did mention the futures there, but I also want to give you, uh, even if it's just a, a stock specific, let's say uh, you come in and you have Powell talking, and you, you, you have a play that you want to make on the strength of, uh, let's say, the financial sector, but uh, you're not sure whether you like uh, JPM for strength. You're not sure whether you want to jump into BAC. You just don't know what instrument to make the play on, but you want it to be bullish. Uh, well, you could simply call up you know, XLF, and that could be your expression of the trade. And I think that's the important thing. I mean, not everyone has access to your broker. You might not be able to trade on the CME, uh, so you might not be looking at the ES, the S&P 500. And if that's the case, uh, the SPY, that's going to be for you. You can look at the spiders. When we get a rune on here and he talks about the futures levels, I know for myself, if I take a, a directional trade in the market, it's usually going to be in the Qs or the SPY, and I'm not going to trade on the ES or the and NASDAQ futures. So uh, they're very, very important for those market moves. But also, if you simply don't know which individual name you want to express a trade on, sometimes it's good uh, to just jump into the ETF. If you think there's going to be a directional play, uh, maybe it's an oil number that comes out and you want to make a play in energy. Maybe it's going to be something with the financials around interest rate decisions. Maybe it's gold and you don't know uh, what to do with the exception of maybe a GDX. Uh, those are valuable tools. Please, of course, make sure you have them available. And uh, one thing I just want to quickly jump to, I'm going to show you uh, IWM just for a quick second because it uh, happens to be a level two. It's going to demonstrate this. Be careful when you look at liquidity. Sean mentioned a lack of liquidity. You can see what seems like solid liquidity on level two, but the amount of shares available relative to the amount of shares that actually print is usually going to be vastly different on, a, on an ETF because there's lots of you know putting uh, entering of orders and pulling of orders. As uh, uh, there are some uh, some arbitrage and algos that are going to be all over there, so don't always be tricked into thinking liquidity on the level two of an ETF is going to be reflective of what you can actually get when a level goes. Note how many shares go off in the time and sales. Very important in ETFs, especially the less liquid ones. Yeah, a lot of dark pool trading uh, happening in the ETFs as well. So uh, definitely pay attention to that one. Neil, you ran over a bunch of good examples here, and I actually have a very, very specific one, and that's going to be Apple. We did a little bit of research here and found out exactly the exposures that are available in these ETFs. So if you want to hold Apple, you know, you want to you want to trade some of these tech stocks, but you don't want to hold the stock itself, or like we were saying, maybe it's too expensive. Apple right now, $350.00. You may not have that kind of capital to invest you know, into one, two shares. You may not want to do that. So instead, you want to look at an ETF. And here we have four right here with the percentages shown of the holdings in their portfolio of Apple. So if you want to take a little taste of Apple, why not take a one in the Spider Technology ETF, XLK, 16.77%, all the way down to the iShares. Uh, you can see down there, 14.5%. So, um, you know, obviously, as new stocks are issued, these um, ETFs are able to remember there's a management fee, so they weight these certain stocks accordingly. Microsoft's going to be in here. Uh, these are all very important plays. And why could they be important? Look, this is the thing. If you're uncertain of maybe how will politics affect Apple? You don't know, but you are pretty certain that technology may be affected by this. And I put an example here with all the tariff talk, all this back and forth with the US and China, obviously a lot of parts being made, Apple specifically as well, AMD, we go on and on and on, the semis, a lot of this is China based, a lot of the production in China, a lot of the sales in China. So what you may wanna do is grab an ETF. You say, you know what, I believe believe the NASDAQ, which again, the QQQs is a great ETF for the NASDAQ. That's the NASDAQ 100. Maybe tech stocks are a little overplayed right now. So you may want to look to go short or buy an inverted ETF that goes short when the market goes up, so on and so forth. So here's just a few examples. I think this is very important. You want to look at an ETF if you are possibly unable to buy the underlying asset. And I mean, the reason why we use tech, Google, 
$1,400. Amazon, $2,500. As an individual shareholder, you may not be able to go ahead and short some of those companies or even buy some of those companies. They're too expensive on a per share basis. So what you want to do is look towards the ETFs, get your money in there, understand which ones. Here's an example of three or four. four. Understand the fees, understand how they move, and uh, you can make money both ways here, guys. All right, guys, the next thing we uh, need to talk about here is going to be on the inverse side. So also, uh, I'll kind of group this together, actually. We'll talk about inverse ETFs and also uh, heavily weighted ETFs. So in some cases, you're going to find two or three times exposure in ETFs that can also be inverse. So we discussed earlier uh, lack of liquidity. A lot of the time, you're going to find a lack of liquidity in some of these inverse ETFs, and they'll really only jump up and start trading decent volume when there are actual market moves and actual market events that are taking place. So uh, let's uh, discuss the, the importance, guys, of uh, understanding the risk involved in maybe two or three times weighted ETFs and also on inverse ETFs. Yeah, I mean, Sean, you touched on the inverse ETF, so we should just uh, note, though, I've seen people in, in the chat talking about uh, expressing trades in SPXU, and that's going to be, you know, as you mentioned there, Sean, it's very, very simple. Uh, you know, if the market is going down, of course, the inverse is going to be going up, and it allows you to take a long position while betting that the market is going to be going down. Now, that is a relatively simplistic thing to consider. Uh, I think the latter topic that you mentioned, Brendan, is certainly going to be the more important one, and that's sort of these triple leverage names. And uh, one thing that I think most people, uh, generally speaking, human beings aren't good at exponentials. And I don't, don't think we understand sometimes the level of risk that can be involved in a triple weighted and just how quickly uh, that can get out of hand on a market move, especially with concerns to liquidity there. So, uh, I mean, I know, Sean, I don't, I've literally never day traded any of those uh, triple weighted. Uh, personally, I don't like getting into them. I find you can usually just take a little bit of extra weight. Right. Just take more of the cues if you want to. Uh, but I know some people try to get those YOLO trades. Uh, do you have any advice? I know I've never traded them. I tend to say it's easier to just step away unless you are absolutely advanced and you're a bit of a pro. Otherwise, I think a lot of times people do it to gamble, in my honest opinion. Yeah, I mean, no, it is a gamble. I mean, it's just for people that are looking to see if there's a big move coming, how can I maximize sort of my exposure on that move? And I have SPXU here. This is a Pro Shares Ultra Triple Short. Okay, uh, so what that means here is, as you can see here, the ES today, that's the S&P 500 on my screen, we are up today 0.267, it's just bouncing around percentage points. What is the SPXU? Remember what we just said? It's an ultra pro short. So what is this? Times this by three, we said it's three times, so you're roughly now down that 1%. Mark it up 0.3, so this times three, down 0.9 should be what it is, but today they're not weighted perfectly, but here you go. This is a great example. SPXU listed on NYSE American, triple leverage. So on a day where the market is basically not moving, relatively flat, you get the SPXU still down that 1%. Now, how is that important? Look, I'm actually in this stock right now as a, day, as, as a long term trade. Look at this move. We just had, unfortunately, one of the biggest drops ever uh, happen in the history with this coronavirus. And look what SPXU does. It's just cruising along, down, down, down. The market's at all time highs right here, guys. $17, right? Then all of a sudden, we get that dramatic drop all the way down to the bad spot in March. And look what SPXU does at that time. It goes from 17. Remember, the market dropped, what, 25%, let's just say. So if this was a normal stock, you would go from 17, you go up 20%. That's like another $4 up or so. So it should only go to 21, right? No. No, this is a triple short. So as the market gets destroyed to the downside, SPXU goes rocketing from 17 guys all the way up here to 43. That's that deadly day in March up to March 23rd, the worst day that we saw. It topped out at $43. Then the V-shaped recovery comes. And this is what you're talking about, Neil. Be smart about this. People have no idea how fast these things can drop. We drop all the way back down and because how they get levered is by playing forward contracts forward options look where we are now the market is not even back 
to where we were. And this SPXU, remember, it was 17 at all-time highs, right? This should not be near $11 right now, but it is because, again, they have to play forward-looking options. So because they're so expensive right now, what happens to the SPXU is it just gets absolutely destroyed up. You're going to see one little move here. This is the Dow dropping 1,800 points on June 11th. This thing goes on a Dow dropping 1,800 points. I believe it was roughly, what was it, 5 or 6% on the S&P that day. So we go from 11 20 closed the day before all the way up to 1320 so you get here about a 20 25 percent move on only an s p move of six percent so traders looking to yolo as you said there neil you only live once so people trying to get rich quick uh brendan will often like to trade some of these inverted etfs but education and risk management no more important than when you put on a trade like this yeah i can't say that enough uh a great explanation there from Sean. Obviously, uh, you know, you have to understand the instrument that you are trading and you have to plan your trade accordingly. Uh, if you're going to be trading a three times leveraged ETF, understand that the move is uh, obviously going to be uh, three times as much as whatever it is following. So uh, a very, very vast topic, guys, obviously ETFs, a uh, very, very complicated one in some uh, situations as well. So I feel like we could do uh, a couple of these videos on ETFs, but I hope you learned something on a general uh, discussion there as far as ETFs are concerned. Valeria, take it away. Hey, Brandon, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, hit the subscribe button and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.